Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be making a replacement spoil board for my CNC router. It's hopefully going to be more accurate and not too expensive. I'm also going to be making the clamps that clamp down the work pieces. As you can see, the spoil board that I have been using is not the greatest or most accurate. The screws on the side are what I used as guides to make sure that the work piece is parallel with the machine axis. This works fine for when the part I am cutting is completely cut out of the center of the stock, but if I have to cut something more accurate or make cuts relative to the edges of the stock, I really need something better. Some of the spoil boards that are available online are really nice. They include T-slots to hold the clamps, and these are quite expensive in my perspective, so I'm going to try to use something that I can find uh, locally and that's a little bit more readily available. When I first made my router, I drilled 374 holes in the bottom of this MDF and put 1024 T-nuts in each of them. This is how I intended to hold down the replaceable spoil boards. Even though these T-nuts aren't quite as handy as a T-slot, they will still work as a way to attach the clamps. Speaking of clamps, I thought I would try to order some inexpensive aluminum clamps from AliExpress or eBay. But after a little bit of research, it turns out that the cheapest I could obtain these clamps for was about $8 a piece. This is kind of expensive and really isn't what I had envisioned. So I hopped on Fusion 360 and drew up some clamps that I could 3D print. I had quite a few requirements for these, so hopefully they would work like I need them to. First, they need to hold down the part and hold it laterally so it doesn't shift while the bit is being drugged through the part. I have some other people who use eccentric clamps that hold the part laterally, but these generally use downcut bits to reduce the splintering of the wood. I use plastic mostly, so I use an upcut bit that will pull the stock off the table, and that's why I need to hold it down. The recess on the edge provides both down and lateral pressure. The second requirement was that it had to work with the T-nuts that were installed on the bottom MDF. I had placed these two inches apart, so the arm of the clamp needs to reach at least two inches and shorter if possible. Third, it needs to be able to handle different thicknesses of materials. This can be accomplished by swapping out the screws, but the screw holes in the plastic need to be accommodate the different angles of the clamp. Fourth, it had to be strong enough and last a long time. 3D printing is not known for its strength compared to parts made of solid material so I had to beef it up a little bit. I would never depend on threads in plastic or a 3D printed part, so the screw on the end uses a pressed in nut to provide the metal threads. I have always had a fairly solid stop on the left and bottom sides of the part, so I'd like to keep that. These extruded aluminum angle iron pieces will work well for that. The screw holes for them should be a little oversized or cut as slots so they can be adjusted. The new spoil board is thinner, but it will work just fine. I will drill oversized holes every 2 inches to allow the clamp screws to go through it to the bottom board where the T-nuts are. The calibration is pretty simple. The spindle will provide the accuracy. I will move it to the two ends of the angle bracket and tighten each of them down. After trying the 3D printed parts, I realized this was not going to be a robust solution. They just bend way too much. So I've got some aluminum here, and I'm going to make some clamps out of this. I'm going to use the manual mill to make them as quickly as possible, because in this application, precision isn't really necessary. <music> Mm-hmm. 
All right, here is the final clamp. Size-wise, it's pretty much the same size as the 3D printed version. I went ahead and recessed an area here with the end mill to allow the screw to move back and forth as the clamp is being tightened down on the workpiece. I also increased the size of this cutout here to have a better grip on the part when everything is tightened down. This project is complete and I accomplished what I set out to do. Like many of my other projects, it took way more time and effort than I originally thought it would. It would have been probably easier and faster to just go out and buy a ready-made solution. So keep that in mind when you build yours. I hope this project has given you some ideas about your own project. Thank you so much for watching.